At some point in every MTG player's life, they reach a place where the chaotic elation of playing mono red decks finally starts to make sense to them. Flying by the seat of your pants, embracing chaos, ending games early in a haze of haste addled, direct damage mayhem. The mono red player is an agent of the absurd and unpredictable, one that thrives in unknowable and ever changing conditions, and these five mono red commanders embrace all the best aspects of Magic the Gathering's most electrifying mana color. If you're looking for a new commander deck to bring a little spicy chaos to your table, then look no further than these fantastic legendary creatures. One of my personal favorites and a commander that will often strike fear into the hearts of your opponents, Magda Brazen Outlaw combines two of MTG's most powerful mechanics into one terrifying legendary creature. For one colorless and one red mana, Magda is a 2-1 Dwarf Berserker that reads, Other Dwarfs you control get plus one plus zero. Whenever a Dwarf you control becomes tapped, create a treasure token. Sacrifice five treasures, search your library for an artifact or dragon card, put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Ah! That's right, Magda not only allows you to generate so many treasure tokens that you end up with more mana than sense, you can sack five of those treasures at instant speed to tutor a dragon or artifact card from your deck straight onto the battlefield. For free. Magda can summon a Blightsteel Colossus onto the board on your opponent's end step and immediately kill someone with them on your turn. Ugh! Why not pull out my favorite move and slap a Blast Furnace Hellkite on the field after your opponent has cleared no blockers? Then give every single creature double strike. Ha! <laughs> Fill your deck with cheap dwarves, maybe some vehicles and convoke spells to tap said dwarves without needing to attack, and then watch as you generate a million treasures and cheat all the most horrible cards in the game onto the board for free. Fun! Now, blue cards might be the best in the game for making copies, but don't discount a red deck's ability to duplicate. Ortheon, Hero of Lava Brink, is a relatively new commander from March of the Machine that allows you to pay one colorless and one red mana to create a token that's a copy of target creature you control with haste that sacks itself on your end step. If you're in the late game, you can pay a whopping six colorless and three red mana to create five of those tokens instead. Ortheon is all about amassing Enter the Battlefield and Death Triggers to constantly double dip on your creature's strong abilities. Panharmonicon effects that give you twice the effect of ETBs are strong in magic as it is, but when you can effectively do it again every turn, that's even better. Play cards like Imperial Recruiter to tutor out creatures, Manic Vandal to destroy opponent's artifacts, or Flame Tongue Carvu for a cheap and reliable burn spell every single turn. You can combine Ortheon with powerful enchantments like Warstorm Surge to build big loads of damage straight into your players' faces. Imagine activating Ortheon's second ability to make five copies of a 10 power creature and having 50 direct damage ready to dish out. Combine that with Stalking Vengeance, a creature that provides the same trigger as Warstorm Surge but for death triggers instead, and you've got yourself a party. Just not, not one that anyone will want to come to. Making copies is a lot of fun, but sometimes Ortheon can get a little bit predictable. For those looking to bring some mindless chaos into their commander games, look no further than Delina Wild Mage. Instead of making a single copy of a creature, why not make a potentially infinite amount of them? Delina Wild Mage is a three colorless and one red mana legendary creature that reads, whenever Delina Wild Mage attacks, choose a target creature you control, then roll a d20. On a one to 14, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary, and it has, at end of combat, exile this creature. On a 15 to 20, create one of those tokens and then roll again. That means you're effectively getting the same trigger as Ortheon, but for attacking instead, and it also has two major advantages in exchange for the riskier cost. Firstly, it breaks the legend rule, which means that you can copy your biggest, baddest legendary creatures without fear of them sacrificing themselves. And secondly, every time it activates, there's a 25% chance that it'll activate again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, to up your chances of hitting that 25% at a barbarian class, or will Blade of Frontiers from each of the D&D sets, which will add advantage to your rolls, giving you a 50% chance of each attack instead. You can break the game even further by putting a Sundial of the Infinite on the board to end the turn during combat, thereby skipping your token's death triggers and keeping them for the rest of the game. 
That's a lot of horrible creatures, and you should feel bad. Or maybe your opponent should feel bad. I don't know. I don't, I'm not here to judge. Go kill some people. <laughs> It simply wouldn't be a list of mono red commanders if one of them doesn't sling copious amounts of damage directly at people's faces. Now, for those who are fans of assembling what I like to call an orbital death laser on their board, might I recommend Ashling the Pilgrim? The ODL has taken many forms in Magic. Jury, Master of Review, gets bigger every time you sack a permanent and then slings damage equal to his power to any target when he dies. The Aetherflux Reservoir turns 50 of your life into 50 damage that you can point directly at someone's face to take them out of the game and is a staple in most life gain decks. But Ashling the Pilgrim doesn't just do direct damage at a single target though. For one colorless and one red mana, Ashling the Pilgrim is a 1-1 Elemental Shaman that, for the same cost as casting them, will place a 1-1 counter on themselves. If it's the third time that ability is activated in a single turn, then you just remove all those counters from Ashling and deal damage equal to the amount of those counters to every single player and every single creature on the board. Yes, that includes your own life total. <laughs> Ashling is not for the faint of heart. You know the deal here by now, you damage doublers. You know, Solfin Mayhem Dominus doubles on non-combat damage, but just to your opponents. Stuffy Dole will allow you to redirect all damage dealt to it to an opponent's life total. The name of the game is making sure that when the nuke goes off, your opponents are taking more damage than you are. Either that, or just swing some hasty creatures at them after the board wipe. You are in red, after all. <laughs> Now there's one other mechanic that features a lot in Red Commander decks that is much beloved for its ability to shake up the game, and that's Wheel. Which for some reason, despite it literally being my name, I've never built a deck around and I should probably fix that. When you wheel, you effectively discard your entire hand and draw a new one. That's a fantastic way for Red players, who usually have absolutely nothing in their hand to begin with, to massively shake up the state of play. Neheb, the Dread Horde Champion, is a two colorless and two red mana zombie minotaur warrior with 5 4 and trample that reads Whenever Neheb, Dread Horde Champion, deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, you may discard any number of cards. If you do, draw that many cards and add that much red mana. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. There's a hell of a lot of ways to build Neheb. Discarding cards might seem like a huge drawback, but there's plenty of mechanics in the game that reward you for dumping cards in the bin in Magic the Gathering. Madness will let you play a card as it's being discarded, usually for a cheaper price to boot. Uh, Squee Goblin Nabob can be discarded as many times as you please and will always come back to your hand on your upkeep. Uh, Anger wants to be in your graveyard to give all of your creatures haste. You could even cast Past in Flames to give everything in your graveyard flashback and treat every card you've discarded as though it was in your hand. Because you've got all that mana anyway. And remember, you'll be making a lot of mana every time you hit your opponents with Neheb. There's, he's already loaded up with Trample. You just give him a few extra things to evade your opponents, like one of the swords for protection, or keywords like Menace or Flying. You could even take someone down with Commander damage if you really want to. I mean, he does five to begin with. Especially when you're carrying combat tricks that increase the Heb's power, like doubling his power, or giving him plus one, or whatever it is that you want. Well, there you have... Oh, sorry. Hold on. Hello? Yeah, no, I'm, j I'm just finishing up now. I'm just about to do the outro. It's not long enough. You want to... Yeah, I can pop another commander in. I haven't written any, though. Have you... Oh, you've already made one for me. Oh, yeah, no, that's lovely. Okay, cool, yeah. I'll, I'll pop in a sixth. Nope. No, 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 no. No, no. Don't play this, commander. Nope. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't do it. Don't... Don't play it. Okay, fine, Itali Primal Storm is an absolutely busted legendary dino that costs four colorless and two red mana and reads, whenever Itali Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library, then you may cast any number of spells from amongst those cards without paying their mana costs. Just for free. Do I need to explain this? Ramp as much as you can in mono red, probably through treasures, then whack down a 6-6 dinosaur that allows you to play everyone else's deck for free. Play cards like Seize the Day to untap Itali and give yourself an additional attack phase. Or do that with every landfall trigger by playing Morag Fury of Akum. Well, you want other cards to play in your deck? Why? You get free cards every time you attack from other people's decks. 
You do not need my help. Go and have a fun murder party. Blame other people for the cards that you play. The world is your shattered oyster. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's pretty fun. You should play a tally. Look, mono red decks can be an absolute ton of fun, and they'll always keep you engaged and excited by the game. You won't be able to rest on your laurels, and a board wipe could spell disaster at any moment, but the potential to unleash absolute carnage is just too good to pass up. Looking for a complete deck list for a brand new Monored Commander? Check out my article on the new Burn Focus Commander from Wilds of Eldrain on Dicebreaker.com. And if you're new here, please do hit subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified whenever we put a new video live. Then let us know what your favorite Monored Commanders in the comments, and as well, which mono color you'd like to see me tackle next. But until then, thanks very much for watching, and have a lovely day.